Well, live from Philadelphia, it's Mr. Pritchard's Art Room. to the art room, or I should say my kitchen. We're still homeschooling, and I hope everyone is safe and well. What? You're canceling the show? Why are you canceling the show? I'm not sophisticated and hip enough for the audience. What are you talking about? I'm sophisticated. You don't like the way I dress. Is this better? I changed my shirt. Well, what are you going to do? Cancel the show and put something else on? What are you going to put on? I'll tell you right now, I'm not changing. You're not going to change who I am. Well, what's the worst you're going to do? Find another teacher from Florida to teach the show? Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to change me. I might not be as sophisticated as hip as that other host. But I'm Mr. Pritchard, and I like me. Let's start the show. Well, welcome back to the art room. I'm still your host and your teacher, Mr. Pritchard, and we're still homeschooling, and I hope everyone's safe and well out there. I was playing around with you a little bit there. They're not going to replace me. Well, we got something interesting Hi, today. Um, um, I'll sure What's that fun. noise? We got a request? Really? Request email. Well, let's read it. Um, the email is from a third grader. Hey, Mr. Pritchard, can we make a book about our lives? And each page will be a different thing that we like in our life. And we can draw it. Sounds like a plan. Making a book about our life, and as we turn the pages, it'll have different things that we like. I know for me right away, one page is going to be music, one page is going to be art. I do like watching movies, too, and I like cartoons. Let's get to work on it. So this week, based on our third grade letter, we're going to make a book about things in our life we like. And each page is going to be a different drawing about something we like. I'm also going to teach a little bit about how to make a pop-up book, if you want to try that also. First thing we're going to break down is the cover of our book. Now the cover is a big part that helps to sell the book. It gets people's attention. Here we have examples of the book cover, Wonder. I was inspired by sitting in some of the classes that are reading this book right now. Now these covers change an awful lot. Some of the covers are based on the movie. Some of the covers are more cartoon-like. Some of the covers work better for me. This cover in particular with just the stars and the word wonder doesn't work as well as the child on the cover with the space helmet. To me that cover gets my attention more. So I want you to start thinking about what your cover is going to look like about the story of your life. Are you going to draw yourself on the cover or are you just going to draw different objects and ideas and things that represent who you are? Let's move on to a pop-up book. And now a pop-up book is just like it sounds like. It pops up. The inside of this book has a waterfall. Not as difficult. 
This one's a little bit more difficult when one turns the page to all these houses and rain is happening. A lot of times a pop-up book reflects about what's going on in the story. Now this bridge and these characters here are a little bit more complicated. I'm going to show you an easy way to do a pop-up idea within your book. And if you like, you can add it to your story. Well, here are the supplies I'm using for my book, based on the idea from our third grader. Now remember, each page is going to be a different part of our life, things that we like. I'm going to do about four to five pages. One page is going to be me, that I like listening to music, me, that I like playing music, so guitar, bass, and drums, me, that I like art, so for drawing and painting and collage, me, that I like cars. So the supplies I'm using are pen, I like drawing with a pen because it gives a bold line and I can feel it on the back. I also found some color pens. If you prefer to use a pencil today, go ahead. Some students like to erase. Nah, I'm not worried about erasing. I'm using regular notebook paper because that's what I have in the house. I don't have a lot of drawing paper here. If you have thicker paper, it'll work better. It'll make the book sturdier. But if not, just regular notebook paper is fine. I like putting a few pieces together so that way when I turn it over I can feel my artwork. Now if you are going to try the pop-up idea, some things I found that will help are glue. It's the only glue I have, all the glues in the classroom. It's so tiny, it's the size of my pinky. If you don't have glue, tape will work. I found some clear tape here in the house. Feel from it, my finger there, tear, can wrap it around itself. Now I got double-sided tape, so that would help if I don't have glue. I'm not using scissors today. I'm just going to tear because, again, my, most of my scissors are in the classroom. If you are using scissors today, remember, they're not toys. You're going to need a parent to look after you. These are dangerous. Remember, with scissors, your thumb goes into the small hole, two fingers on the bottom like a peace sign, always thumbs up. You don't face these towards yourself. I've taught little ones before when I cut, my elbow go towards my ribs and I put my thumbs up, two fingers, and I do not move that arm. That arm stays still and as I'm cutting. That way I'm not facing them towards myself. When I'm done, set them down. They're dangerous. They're not toys. But again, I'm not using scissors. I'm just going to show a method of tearing. Well, let's get to work. All right, here's the first thing we need to do. I need to make a bunch of pages. Now, I'm not going to use the entire piece of paper for a page of the book, I'm making it a little smaller. So I'm going to fold it in half, vertical style. I like when students call it hot dog. I try my best to match up the corners, and always a trick I like to do is holding the corners and my fingers touch together when I fold, I know I got the corner to corner. Crease it. Here's my hot dogs, or for me, a veggie dog. I like to open it, turn it the opposite way, and crease it again. Now what I'm doing is weakening the paper. So I'm going to keep doing this. Opening the flap, creasing it, open it again. Fold it the opposite way, still doing that vertical hot dog method. Sometimes I'll take my fingernail and scratch down it with my thumb. This is weakening the paper, because again, I'm not using scissors. Feels pretty weak. So I'll start a little tear here. A little tear a rip, then I'll go down to the bottom, start a little tear. That way they'll match up. Oh, here we go. Slowly pulling them apart. Not so fast. Let's do another one. Take my piece of paper. Get those corners to match. Oh, there it is. Oh, a little off. Fix it. Now I start pushing. Crease it. Open it. Go backwards with the crease, match it up again. 
There it is. Keep going back and forth to weaken it. Take my fingernail, scrape it. Go this way, do the same. Open it, put a little rip on the top so it knows where to stop. Put a little rip on the bottom. My students love it when I go fast, but I'm not gonna go fast with this paper. It's super thin. Slowly pull them apart. Now for each page of our book, we're now gonna take this vertical piece and fold that in half. This time I went like the hamburger, I didn't go the hot dog technique. Or the veggie burger from Mr. Pritchard. Opens up like an old cell phone. Hello? No, I'm busy right now teaching. I'll call you later. I'm not going to weaken this one. I want this to be nice and sturdy because this is going to be our book. Let's grab the other one. Same idea. Match them up corner to corner. Give it a little bit of crease. So now I got two different pages. If you want, you could also use the pages with the holes in them. One of these pages is also going to be for our cover. So it's up to you how many of these you're going to make. I need about four or five, and you also need one for the cover. Each one of these pages is going to be part of our life. Now, if you're doing this without the pop-up book, I'm going to start with that idea first. Let's get started on a book that doesn't have any pop-ups. I'm going to take one of the long pieces of paper, fold it in half like a hamburger, now, I'm not going to open it and recrease it again and again because that would weaken it. Your first decision is, do you want your book to be vertical, horizontal? I'm going to keep my book vertical so it opens up like a notepad. I took some extra pieces of paper out. This way, I can put my drawing on top and then it gives it a thick surface to draw on so when I pick up my drawing later, I can feel it from behind. I have to find a place where I want to put the story if I want to put words in my pages of the things I like. Now this page is my favorite thing being I like going to comic book stores. So this was this page. Another page is going to be I like music, I like playing music, I like cars. If I want, I could write a story on top or I could put braille here. Now if you're going this way, you would write the story horizontally. I could put the story on the bottom, top. I could fill the whole thing with a story and then put a small little drawing. I'm going to put my story up on this page and I'm going to give itself a little tiny rectangle kind of box to live in and I'm going to curve it a bit. One of my favorite things are comic books. Let's make another box. My dad used to take me to comic shops. Bottom panel, I'll put the drawing. Let's make this page one, the bottom panel page two. If you want, you could draw a line between where it folds so you know where it's separated. I'm going to draw a spindle of comic books, a line with a bunch of ovals in it. Back in my day, the comic book store would have these. Now, I started off with a black pen, not using a pencil. I wasn't too worried about erasing. If you're worried about erasing and you want to start off with pen, well, maybe start off with a lighter color. So if you make a mistake, you can draw over it. I'm putting some of these comic books within these oval shapes. And they would spin around. Give it a little stand. Behind it, I'll put cabinets full of comic books. And I'll draw rectangle shapes. The cabinets were just horizontal lines like a bookshelf. Now, if I wanted to, I could spend the time and 
drawing characters or names of the books. Maybe put a little Batman symbol here. Maybe on the floor. It's like a Batman carpet down here. I could completely change the look of this by making the artwork the entire panel. So let's take one of our extra pieces. I could do that spindle again, yet this time draw it all the way up. That drawing went a little crooked, I'm drawing backwards, and then the bookshelf could go all the way. This would look completely different because I'm filling the page this time. The story might just be a little bit here. Maybe the story's written in the comic books. I like to go to comic stores. My father used to take me. That would be an interesting idea. So there's a lot of ways you can think about making this book. Next thing you're going to have to do is the cover. You need to take one of your long strips. Now my cover is going to be vertical like the book. So I'm not working horizontally. Cover's up to you. You definitely should put your name on it. Now remember, the cover gets people's attention and interest. So you might make a cover. This is my story. Mr. Pritchard's art stories. Maybe it's a picture of your face. Maybe it's a picture of all your favorite things so the customer knows what they're getting into before they pick up the book. Let's get into the pop-up book now. But before, I'm going to slide these in the cover, fold that up. I can definitely feel my drawings from the back too. Well, now I'm going to teach you some of these pop-up book ideas. I'm going to be showing you a very, very simple pop-up book technique. I'm going to take one of those long hot dog pieces I already ripped from, from the entire, this was you know, one piece. I'm going to fold it in half, this time hamburger style. Or, as I like to kid around with, the uh, cell phone. Hello. I do not have to keep folding it. I don't want to weaken it. I don't want to go back and forth like I did before. I'm not going to tear this. Now, keep the open side down and the crease side that's closed on the top. What you got to do is you're going to put two lines in it. One, two. If you're wondering, Mr. Pritchard, is there a right or wrong or... No, just try your best. Doesn't have to be perfect. They don't have to be perfectly spaced. I made mine spaced about my thumb. And then I also took my thumb from here to here, from the edge of the paper to the start of the line, and then also the same on this side. Your line should be about the length of your thumb. Now, I'm going to take those two lines, hold the papers together, and I'm going to tear on those lines. I'm not ripping this out. I am just tearing on the line. So now, when I open it, it's got tears on both sides now. Now, this still has the feel of a regular book. So this little part we just tore has to stand up and be three-dimensional inside when we open this. So what we got to do is take that tab and push it, push it inside the book. So I'm going to push down on it. I like taking my pinky, and my pinky can pull down on it too. When I do that, then, I have to set it down for a minute so I can hold it. Now that I push down on it, it's way down there. I can crease the top where the tear ends. Crease that little part right there. Now when I open it, hey, it's three-dimensional. And what this will do... I'll open it, I can have my story here, an idea or something taped here, and a drawing here. Maybe the drawing goes here. I plan on putting artwork here, here, and maybe a story here. Want me to teach it again? Okay. Take another piece. 
fold it like a hamburger. Thumb space, line, line, draw those two lines, make them about the length of my thumb. If you make them too tiny, the object might not stand as well, might be a little bit more difficult. Now, you can tell on this one, I gave more space on this side. So it's fine. I made a mistake, but it's fine. Tear them. Remember, I'm tearing from the side where it's creased, not the side where it's open. Tear. Now I got to take this tab, and it's got to fold inside the book. Open it. Push, push it in, push this tab inside the book, pulling down on it. Pull, 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 pull. If you want to put your finger in there to help you pull it down. Pull down all the way now. Now I take the top of that little new tab and I fold it right there. Crease it up. Now it's got that feel to it. Well, let's get to work on a pop-up page. Well, here is the pop-up page. I stacked it on a few pieces so when I draw, I can feel my drawing from behind. Now, when you're working on these, you don't really want to draw on the piece that stands up because this is going to get covered with something else. We're going to tape a design to this to make it three-dimensional. So I'm going to work on the backs, the front of the bottom panel too. So, this page I'm going to do, I like making music. I'll start in a lighter color this time if I make a mistake. So the first thing I'm going to draw is an amplifier. Again, I'm staying off of that tab. Notice I didn't draw across that tab. Drawing that simple box shape we talked about when we were drawing cars. Now again, I started with a light blueberry color. So if I make a mistake, I can work over it. Here's going to be where the speakers are. I'm not going to draw on that tab. I'm going to make it a fender amp. Move on to the black and start making some things more permanent. Pushing hard so I can feel the drawing from behind. Now when you make things permanent, you don't have to do every single part of the line. Sometimes I just do parts. I might skip little areas. Sometimes I want it to go so perfect that I color the line perfectly. Take every little part of it. Other times I just quickly sketch over those parts. Here's where the knobs go, where it plugs in. Make the speakers look more like grills. Working on it a little quick. Let's get that cord out. Now down here it could be the floor. I can make the floor a little complicated if I wanted to. I could start from a dot, make a vanishing point. Not drawing on that tab. So everything goes back to that little dot I made in the middle. If I want to make it maybe tiles, I can make horizontal lines. So there's my floor, there's the amplifier. Now this part is going to have me. So I'm going to take another piece. Flip this over now so you don't have to go, why is it backwards the whole time? I'll get a lighter color, so if I make a mistake. And I'm going to draw myself playing guitar, and I'm going to draw it mm, about the same size as the top part of the paper. So if you want, you could fold it in half so you know you're drawing it about the right size. And that way it'll give me paper underneath it so I can feel it. 
sketch out a head shape, get that oval shape into a rectangle body, long rectangle legs. I'm drawing mine pretty quick. Give me those half circle legs, feet, excuse me. Rectangle, circle, rectangle. Quick, 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 quick. Let's get a guitar shape in there. And I started off again with a light color, so all these little mistakes I make, I don't have to draw them with the dark pen. Let's not worry about facial features right now. Go in with this darker one now. Some shadows in there too. Quick little fingers in there. Is that guitar headstock? So here I'm not drawing all the shirt and the pants. I'm drawing the guitar over top of it, so I'm not sketching over all of it. Now this part has got to be ripped out. I'm not using scissors. So a good trick to use, and I'll do it with a different color, let's go to green, is making a border around it. And what this is doing is it's scraping a line into it. Definitely helps if I have more paper underneath it. I'm going to grab another piece, scrap, makes it a little softer. Oh yeah. Now, I'm not doing this to add color. What this is doing is it's weakening the paper around me that I drew. Now, this page, again, is one of my favorite things, is playing guitar. When I start tearing, you know, I'm scraping into the paper right now. This is definitely going to help it tear. Let's get started. Let's get rid of this. Get rid of the top. Slowly, slowly. Oh look, it got right on that green and it stopped. Because the green line is pretty thick. I make a mistake, Taryn. I got tape right here. I can always tape it. Recycle the rest of that. Oh, it's right there on that green line. That did a nice job. Yeah. Slowly pinching and tearing it off. I tell you, that green line, mint green line, really helped. I'm going at it kind of quick. I don't want to take up all day with you guys on YouTube so you guys can do this on your own. Here's my little guy. La, 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 la. So what I got to do now is he will be glued or taped there. Now I'm not gluing them all down. Only the bottom part of the panel, if you want, I'll put some color on it so you know this part. If I'm using tape, take a little bit of tape again. Roll it onto itself so it's double-sided. And there he is. If I'm using glue, same idea. Put a little glue on this part, glue it down. Well, let's get to the finished product. Here's my finished cover page. I did a simple oval shape, glasses, and just a title across me. Not a lot of details on my face. It just says Mr. Pritchard's favorite things. The 
First book we did was the non-pop-up one. This is my comic book page. I also have the practice one that I made bigger. Eventually I'll have three or four pages. I like art, I like cars, I like listening to music. Now when you're doing these, you have to fold the pages separately. Here's both pages folded separately. Then you stack them. Make sure the crease is on the same side. If you leave them open, it doesn't give the same effect if I stack them when they're open. Because when I turn the page, the other side is covered. So they got to be separate. Take them, stack them, put them inside our cover. Now, I got a book. There's my other page. Now if I had a stapler, top crease I could staple twice. There's no stapler. They're all in the art room. Sorry guys. I'm going to keep the same cover page for the pop-up book and let's move on to that. Here's the page we just worked on together. The scene that I like playing music and I use tape to put it on the little tab that's three-dimensional. It's got a background, which is a speaker, a middle ground closer to the viewer, which is me playing guitar, and then a foreground, which is the floor. I'm really looking forward to seeing what ideas you guys come up with if you decide to do the pop-up. You might say, I like playing video games. This might be the TV in the background. The tab might be the game station with the controller and then the floor here. You might say, I like cell phones. And it might be something random that you put designs here and a story in the background. Maybe a giant cell phone as the tab coming at you in the background might be more randomness designs. It's completely up to you. Now, if you're a student that needs to be able to feel your drawings, you could always push the tab backwards, fold the paper this way, and then glue the person on the other side so you can feel your artwork. I did another page too. Now, I did a page based on our first one, comic, yet I did it 3D. Here it is, and I took more time with it. It's got the spindle, or this time my person is three-dimensional on the tab, and it looks like I'm grabbing from the spindle because my hand is really close. I took more time with the color. The floor, I put that Batman rug again, and I put a little bit of the story there. Now, this one... No different than the other book, the way you fold it. You know, I definitely need to take more time with this one with color. I like this one. I got really quick with the black ink on the pages to make it look like separate pages. I didn't put any designs yet in the book. Yep, same kind of fold. One at a time. We're not putting them together. Take the tab, take the tab, then you stack them from there. This one, I made the person too big. They're sticking out. Open up the cover. Slide it in. There's page one. I like playing music. Page two. I like comics. Going to comic book stores. I didn't do anything on the back cover yet. I'm really looking forward to what you guys come up with for your pop-up books or regular books. It's a great idea our third grader had to make a book about different things in our life that we like. The number you have dialed. What's that sound? We got fan mail? Huh. Well, let's read it. Oh, the second grade student included her car project in the email. She did a great job with that 3D cube shape for the vehicle. She's even got a building behind it in that same shape. What a great job with the tires on both sides of the vehicle also. Her note says, Dear Mr. Pritchard, when I grow up, I want to be just like you. I want to do art. Wow, what a great letter. Something tells me that second grader's goal is going to become true. All your goals can become true. If you want to become a great artist, a musician, a doctor, a teacher, you just have to practice and work hard to achieve your goals. I really look forward to seeing your artwork for your book or your pop-up book. Remember, you need at least three to four pages and a cover page. Now today I decided to add a little color because I had some of those color pens. Do you have to add color? No. Most of the projects I've been doing at home are just black and white pen or pencil. Well, 
I really look forward to seeing them. And until next time, stay safe, and I hope you're well. And stay creative. Oh, <laughs> yeah.